Okay, no drinking jokes now, lads. I know I'm Irish. And finally, finally, I get some time now to talk without being under pressure, under laser coaching. So, we'll start off. Um, look, my, myself and, and Ken O'Malley down the back there were uh, part of Ozone Health and Fitness. And we're based in the west of Ireland, um, in a county Clare, in a town called Innes. And it was the reason I'm up here instead of Ken. Like I said, Ken is the owner, I'm the general manager. And the reason I'm up here is because over the past couple of years, myself and Ken have developed a relationship where I no longer work for him, I work with him. And ultimately, at the end of the day, Ken has his own business as well. He's a contractor, he does aircraft leasing and that kind of stuff. So it's up to me to run the business, push it, grow it, all that kind of stuff, and deal with all the problems that come with it. And Ken just comes in in the evening and goes on my back about why the numbers aren't as high as they should be. <laughs> so what I want to talk to you about today is where we came from, um, what we've done in the past 12 months in particular, and the potential that's out there, not just for us, but for all of you here as well, okay? So that's what we're going to look at. So where it all began, we opened our doors in January 2009, and everybody said, it was a bad idea, that's what everybody said. You're in a recession, won't work, you know, big mistake, blah, 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 and they kept going. <laughs> but in fairness to Kane, he didn't listen. He decided to push through the negativity and follow his vision. And his vision was to develop an unrivaled fitness centre in our local area that developed the best service and the best results to its clients. So, with no clue, no customers, you can ask him yourself, I don't, I don't think he knew how to run a treadmill for fuck's sake. And <laughs> ozone, ozone was born out of that, okay? So, we went on like that for a couple of years. So, how I fit in myself, I have a degree in civil engineering. When I first came out of college or high school to Ye Yanks, I I kind of thought, well, where are all the jobs? And at the time, it was in construction because everyone was buying houses and building houses faster than they, they could be built. So I thought that's what I'd get into. So I went into civil engineering and thought it'd be great money in that. By the time I came out, the whole place was falling apart. There was no money anywhere. So I had to make a decision and I had to immigrate over to you lovely people over here. So I came over to London. But for me to come over to London, I had to make a very hard decision and that was split with the love of my life um, for work, which didn't sound too appealing. This is her here on the, the left, Neve. And it was probably, you know, I was head over her heels with this girl. I thought I was going to marry her. But ultimately, she had work here. I had to move for it. So we went and we, unfortunately, long distance didn't work, so we split up. So, but while I was over there, I knew civil engineering wasn't for me. I knew it wasn't my passion. And... Three months I lasted, and I got very sick of it. And I knew there was something more to life. There, there had to be something. You had to follow some sort of dream. So I had two options. Give it up, give up the money, go on the dole, go on state support, and that kind of stuff. But I'd be following the dream, or suffer in silence for the rest of my life, which I didn't want to do. So yeah, I give it up. Because if you're not living the dream, you're not living. All right. But I had a fear. Failure, my biggest fear, and I'm sure everybody here has felt that as well, and it's what, that's what holds us back. But for me, you know, I'm one of those guys where I don't fail at anything. You know, I went off, did civil engineering degree, I got on well, got a good job, and I hated the thought of failure. I hated the, the thought of being embarrassed about disappointing myself, my family, all that kind of stuff. So there was security. I had a good job. I was making good money. I was going to lose all of that. For what? To go on state support and potentially you know, lose it all to follow, you know, a career that may not deliver anything for me. But I was also had a fear that if I stayed where I was, I wouldn't have any enjoyment in it. And I just, unfortunately, end up like my father, who was last week 40 years in the same job in a factory. He hates every minute of it. That's not what I wanted for myself. But where there's fear, there's opportunity. And now, I suppose, through meeting Ken, first of all, and through NPE, you know, I have a vision. I have a vision for myself, one, three, five years for the business, I have dreams that I'm reaching, that, that, I, that I want to reach for myself, and I have a purpose, and that purpose is to be the best, deliver the best for my clients, and a passion. You know, I finally have a passion. I could have stayed with civil engineering because that would have been the smart thing to do, but then I wouldn't have any passion for it. So it's a good place now, but with all that being said and done, I gave it up. So now I was flat broke, no job, and drawn state support. So, I borrowed some money, got qualified in the personal training and a lot of different things with it. I walked into Ozone, CV in my hand, I met Kane and I said, um, 
you know, I'll come in, I'll work for free to prove myself, because this is the only facility in my area that I wanted to work in. So I said, I worked for as long as I needed to, to prove myself. Within 12 months, I was general manager of that facility, and we're growing every day. Franklin D. Roosevelt said it best, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Just let that sink in for a second. You don't have to fear change, okay? Embrace it. This clicker's working. It's not. No. So how NP has helped us grow? I suppose since 2009, for five and a half years, we were struggling. And didn't know where the next membership was coming from. Did we have enough money to pay the wages the following week? Leads. I didn't know what a lead was. Contact details. <laughs> we had... We had people walking in the door of our facility. We showed them around. He goes, yeah, it's a nice facility. Thanks very much for stopping by. And let them out the door. <laughs> it's, it's no word of a lie. Ken, Ken will tell you, three, three, four, five and a half years we were doing that. It was like, you know, only we started talking to NP. We were going, right, we're doing something wrong here, lads. We had no systems, no tools, no processes for tracking. None of it. Forget it. We just, we were, you know what? It says it best. All we were doing was trying to keep the door open, and that's what we did for five and a half years, and that's all we saw it as. We're in a recession, we'll keep the door open, that's all you could do. But for us to grow, we had to think outside the box, because either we started making this a business and making it work, or I did, I should say, then might as well just pack it all in and go back to civil engineering. So, great saying by Wayne Dyer, change how you look at things, and the things you look at will change. So we started changing how we looked at the business. So it wasn't just about keeping the doors open, it was about growth. And we had to start growing for our own personal goals and for our, our family and our, and our business goals. So how NPA has helped us grow. March 2013, we Googled it. You know, we said, how do you, how do you market a fitness business? Because we can't just let people continue to walk in and out the door without taking some sort of details. So we found NPE. And we said, yeah, this stuff looks all right. So we signed up to Gold Plus, and they started sending out this stuff. And who else here thought they were just crazy-ass Americans? It's just, this stuff isn't going to work like, you know. Not in the west of Ireland at all. They're awesome this and awesome that. But so <laughs> we kept. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. So. We kept getting their emails anyway and said Sean was bombarding us there for a while. And we had a coach call with a previous coach at the head, Anna Dornier, over in America. And again, we pushed her out for a month, didn't really think it was going to work. But August 2013, we bit the bullet, went into Evolution Accelerator, and I suppose directly, at, we weren't with him, I suppose, maybe two weeks. Oh, we went to the first mega train in last year. And from there, I started talking to, I did the laser coaches, probably you know, rambling on, and I, was I did the coaches corner as well. And the couple of ideas I brought back was, you know, raise the rates, you need to change your model, because the gym, gym memberships just don't bring in any revenue if you want to realize your dream goals. So I brought these back to Ken, because Ken wasn't with me last year. Ken said, forget it, they're just crazy ass Americans, that's not going to work. So... We prolonged it, and we pushed it out. We said, we'll, we'll try it ourselves, we'll, we'll keep going. So Dublin fast forward, rolled around. Um, as Ben said himself, and Tom came over. And it was that stage, it was the first time Ken had met him. And at that stage, it kind of, I suppose, recommitted us to our goals and gave us the, the courage to, to, as it says, have courage, practice faith. But it also persuaded Ken to get the finger out and start doing something about it. So January, February, pull that finger out, <laughs> and we started doing something about it. So uh, for a couple of months, we started changing the business model a little bit, and we started bringing in, rather than just a gym, we started bringing in personal training clients. One, two, three a month, four. This is not too bad. So we rolled along like that for a while, and we said, look, this is not going to get us to where we want to go fast enough. So we said, VIP, it's either go or bus now. So, we went in three weeks before spring training, did VIPU, hit spring training, I'm going to hit you with some, some powerful figures in, in a minute, so pay attention. <laughs> the tools, I suppose the very first thing we had to do was, you know, we were confused about our business model. We were at gym, but where were we going to do PT and, and all that, so we didn't really know what way to go with it. So we had to look at our pricing, our packaging, all that kind of stuff. Where were our margins? So now after spring training, and, and even since January and February, we do private training, we do small group, and now we've just gone into boot camp since July, 
and we've raised the rates and we, we offer gym memberships still to high paying clients who, don't, who can't afford the, the private or the small group but want to filter down into something, something less. Admin and marketing. Like we have a girl, you know, the lads have been talking about admins all along, just get one. They do all the donkey work for what I want of a better word, all the follow up, you know, helping you with your marketing, the emails, all that kind of stuff, well worth it. Infusionsoft, guys have been talking about it as well. Just for the follow up of the campaigns, all that kind of thing, makes it so bloody easy. Again, this girl kind of studies it and eats it for breakfast, so I don't really have a clue what goes on inside it, to be honest, so I need, I need to learn. Startup active to the, to the guys there, like you saw earlier on, our, our views on the website, our hits went from 500 to 5,000 since spring training. That's only in May. And we're actually generating, I'm going to show you some figures through um, Facebook advertising as well. But it's all pushed to the website, pushed to landing pages. And without that website, you know, all this advertising is great, but if you're not sending them to something that's going to convert, then what are you sending them to? You know, I might as well be showing them around the gym and saying thanks very much for stopping by. <laughs> so, what we have achieved so far, <coughs> our business growth. In the last 12 months, we've gone from four to 10 employees. We're no longer worried about the wages being paid every week. We've implemented systems for attracting leads, tracking numbers, closing sales. As I said, a couple of numbers coming at you in a minute. Developing management systems to expand our business. And we're actually looking at opening another facility in our same locality, the other side of town, to squeeze all the competition out and take all the business from ourselves, that'd be great. But also set clear goals and visions for ourselves and the business, because at the end of the day, guys, if, if, if you're operating a business and, you know, if you're just running along and you're generating revenue, like, what's your dream goal? What are you trying to get out of all of it? Is, is what your business doing, is it generating enough for you to realize your dream goals? Or are you just tipping along? That's all we were doing, tipping along, keeping the doors open. So you need to sit down, set your visions for yourself as well, and personally, and for the business. So business growth. Two years ago, the bank balance was in the red, literally living off and over there. So I blew it up there so you could see it a little bit. Down at the bottom right, that was our balance, negative nearly 3,000 in December 2012. Ten days ago, 10th of Oc or 7th of October, we just crossed the 30K mark sitting in there. And 50k is on the, the horizon as well. So prior to February this year, we had no personal training model. Um, and as I said, we started bringing in one, two, three clients. April, not a bad month, six clients. We pulled in 12,000 in new client revenue. We went to spring train and listened to Sean about your, your message, you know, nailing down the message, the core problem, your, your solution, your brand positioning statements, all that kind of stuff. After spring training, 38,000 in new client revenue. Over 40. <laughs> As, you're, you're only going to be clapping for the rest of this, so hold on for a minute. Over 43,000 in total with the programs that go in it. July, over 36,000 in new client revenue, over 40,000 with, with um, just the, the affiliate programs with it. And that's, you know, to, to put it in perspective, this is new client revenue just for PT. There's another 20, 25K on top of that since we raised the rates for the gym. You're talking about 65K now, currently. And to tell you guys, we're not doing half the list of stuff that Sean said in the marketing earlier on today, like, you know, so. <laughs> The potential is, is serious. Personal growth. MPA have really helped me visualize my, my own goals and things as well in terms of, and I didn't believe this whole visualization thing either, you know, seeing it, how it's going to feel like, touch, sense, all that kind of stuff, smell. But I had a couple of goals that I, that I wanted, right? Number one was that girl. I wanted her back and I was going to get her back. So when I went to spring or to mega training last year, I started thinking in my own mind, how I was going to make that happen, and I saw situations. And that picture I showed you earlier on wasn't us from five or six years ago when I broke up with her. That was two months after Megatrain. So I've got her back. <laughs> that, that, that leads me on to dream number two, is the house. So 12 months ago, here at Megatrain, and I sat and I did my one, three, and five-year vision. And this is a scan of that exact same piece of paper that I typed up. And what I circled there is that I start looking at a mortgage. And myself and dream number one, as I call her now, 
are now in the midst of buying our house and we're not far off from closing the deal either. So we're close. <laughs> the care. So this is dream three, the care. Um, this is in my three year vision. Let me get this up. Aston Martin DB9. Coming, coming soon. Watch this space. <laughs> I'll, I'll drive it from Ireland. Dream four, money. I just want more money. <laughs> so how did we grow so fast? Very simple. If you all don't have those stuck up on your wall on the desktop of your computer, stick them up there. As Jessica said, the big one for us was have courage, practice faith. If we didn't have the courage to make the change to our personal training and all that, I wouldn't be up here. You know, we'd, we'd be nowhere, still keeping the doors open, letting people walk in and out, not having a clue how to turn on the treadmills. The NP roller coaster. For too long, we struggled, thought we had a business. We were lucky to break even if we did. We lacked focus, direction, you know, the knowledge of how to grow a business, how to market it. Um, NPE came into our sphere of influence, started growing very quickly. Only in the last 10 months, and more so in the last four or five months since, since VIP and, and spring training, can we see really, really serious um, potential for ourselves. And it's really exciting, guys. Like, we're getting those results that you've seen there already. We haven't even touched on seven out of the eight things that, that Sean was talking about. Um, <laughs> So follow the damn instructions and you'll grow just as fast as we did. So I just want to run the last minute or so just through some, some numbers, right? The first one here, uh, if I can get this up again. So this is kind of Facebook, right? So before spring training, March and April, you can see on the, the left-hand side there, ran an ad, spent about 102 euros, generated 6,000. Not a bad return, 6,000%. April, we did the same, 516 euros. So it took a major nosedive because... Again, until spring training, our, our message wasn't accurate, it wasn't 100%. After spring training, just through Facebook, 33,000 return of a couple of ads in June. July, 26,000. And take a look at that. July was when we started boot camp. So you can see it's the third line up. Fourth column, fifth column, obviously spend, seven euro spend generated nearly 2,500 euros on a Facebook ad. That's a return on investment of 35,000%. Yeah, crazy numbers. So uh, this is to give you an idea right, of where we are at the moment in terms of our targets, guys. Our June month, is, this is how it worked out. We had 88 leads. That gave us 42 went into pre-qualified, booked for consultations, or 42%, I should say. That's 37 booked consultations. Our show rate was low, 60%. That gave us 22 consultations. Conversion rate in June was 73. That, I wasn't happy with that, but it gave us 16 clients, 43,000 euro new client revenue. Who here thinks that they can't give their clients 10% better results, or you can't do 10% more for your business? Put your hand up if you think you can't do that. Yeah, as expected, nobody. Increase that by just 10%. 10% more leads, 97% or 97 leads. 52% turn up, you get 50 leads booked, 70%. Ultimately leads to 35 consultations. 83% close rate is, is, is extra 10%, which I still wouldn't be happy with, I'm aiming for 100. That's 29 leads, or 29 closed clients. That's 75,000 in new client revenue per month. That's currently what we're aiming at. You know, and that's not doing all the other things in the marketing. All right. Twelve months ago, I said I'd be up here. Didn't know how, even I was talking to some of the guys in January, didn't think I'd even be here or how we'd get there. I said I'd be up here. Guess what? <laughs> here I am. Now, last, very, very last thing, guys. I, I know that arrow is pointing to the guy with the camera over there, so it makes no sense. But the very last thing I'll say is, um, you know, I'm proof that this stuff works just by implementing some of the systems. In the last 12 months, you know, like I've pulled myself completely out of the business from personally training the clients so I can focus on driving the business to significant growth. And personally, in a, in a more personal note, over the last 12 months, I've realized 50% of my top dream goals before the age of 30. And anyone here can do that as well. You just have to believe in yourself, overcome that fear, and rise up. All right? Thank you.